Glenn, we are the only two hosts I've ever been here. That's true. All right, I'm going to tweet it. <laughs> then it'll be extra true. Yeah, it'll be very real. It's in writing. just happened to be my favorite of the really good ones Hmm. i had one yesterday someone had uh i'd I'd had a funny joke tweet finn finn uh, steam steamboat willionaire (laughs) Uh, more of a wordplay than i guess a joke but uh 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 uh, uh, but someone says oh well how are you gonna give us the dolly prompt without (laughs) doing it so uh made it and uh it came out pretty well it was like a dis i had to do a disney style uh animation cell i think it didn't really know what a what an animation cell is but i think if you blurred your eyes it, oh yeah oh it, no, no no it looks about right yeah no he, he doesn't know what to do with all his money he's trying <laughs> to figure out where to invest it <laughs> do i put it in salt futures do i put it in Barrel futures? Uh, World War II bonds? I mean, they haven't even had World War I yet. <laughs> um, I hear the sequel's going to be better than the first one. Though. The, uh, uh, did you see, I, I want to say it was Teslarati or something. Mm-hmm. No, 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 maybe it was in Gadget. But somebody, like the first thing he did when he got access to Dolly was uh, just write a Tesla blank for every home appliance. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it might okay. be it might be worth finding that we can go through that as a list <laughs> because uh, you start you start to get a sense of what it is Dolly thinks Tesla is. <laughs> I saw uh, the I, I think the uh, it was the XKCD guy yep. got it and he was making uh, like Game Boy coffee makers and stuff like that. It's very good at um, oh yeah okay, very that's cool. yeah yeah uh, there you go it's Mike great. that's the ball cool I'll make sure we get that righty. Uh, hello, everybody. It's just the two of us today, uh, but we are as it always rocking has been, and it's always been that way. Yeah. Uh, let's see. That's going. That's going. That's going. All right. You want to do a show? Yeah. All right. Ready. Uh, all righty, everybody. Here we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I am your host, as always, Bryce Castillo, joined by the only person in the world who is my co-host, Brian Brushwood. Ah, uh, the weird wars. They were a thing. <laughs> Not all of us made it. <laughs> That's right. Brother we against brother, they said. The weird, the weird <laughs> green line. Weirdo against weirdo. Weird, <laughs> weird as he freaks. We, we the weirdos too, won out. We were too busy fighting the weird wars last week. That's why we weren't around. <laughs> but now it's settled. But, and the weirdest remain. That's right. And so uh, thank you for joining us on this concentrated weird things. Uh, I, I, it, we've been off for two weeks, uh, but I, I definitely feel like the first thing we got to talk about is the James Webb telescope. Oh, my goodness. Photos coming uh, back. I cannot remember the last time I was so excited to hit F5 on uh, on all the pages. Um, yeah. So the 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 first images and data uh, are back from the James Webb Webb Space Telescope. Um, uh, NASA put out just a few of a few of them, uh, but I've got them here. If we if we want to talk about what exactly we're seeing in this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, let's start with the very first one that um, uh, kind of in an unprecedented PR move of. Um, one might say for a campaign that could use a boost, uh, uh, President Biden un- unveiled the uh, uh, the first image. And the first thing that really pops in the deep field image that they showed mm-hmm. is all of the bendy uh, galaxies. And I'm uh, this not going to lie. Yeah. A, a, a few yeah. years ago, I wouldn't have known why those galaxies were so bendy, mm-hmm. except for I was really excited that I got to promote our, our friend Brent Hughes's uh, uh, video beacon. essay on uh, uh, gravitational lensing and Einstein's cross Einstein's and all cross, that stuff. Yeah. Basically, you know, when um, uh, so so this is this is Smax 0723 is the name of the photo, and there's a star cluster in.
Yeah. In fact, you can really tell um, in in the next photo uh, that I wanted to pull up the uh, the oh gosh the the, the Southern Ring Nebula. And uh, this is two images of the same uh, sort of object, kind of a pill-shaped looking nebula. But the one on the left is, I believe, the... It's got to uh, be the James Webb because you can see the six-pointed lens flares. Well, the left is from the James Webb's NIRCAM, N-I-R cam, that is near-infrared. The one on the right is the MIRI, uh, the mid-infrared. So these are the same images, or the same galaxy both from the James Webb Space Telescope. Oh, that's wild because on the right-hand one, you can definitely tell that what looks like a single star in the left-hand one is mm -hmm. resolved into two separate stars. Well, and that's that's the big point here is that uh, they, this seems to show that uh, the Southern Ring Nebula is a, is a dual star uh, system. There are two stars in there, not just one. Um, and we can tell that now because of this infrared uh, filtering that they're able to do. Because because you're right, you zoom in on, on the normal uh, infrared and it just looks like one big uh, point. And it's doubly wild because even within the six-pointed lens flare, you can see the image of hexagonal artifacting in there. It, yeah. it's, it's a bit like um, there's one bridge here in Austin where um, there's a, 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 how would you describe it? it it's it's a, a Fifth Street when you're headed east. Um, there's a, 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 a pedestrian bridge okay. that has a whole bunch of circles, but then the circles line up such that it makes a image of y oh. bigger circles made up of smaller circles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like, like um, um, I, it's like a perspective image. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, but, but you see that kind of in there. Um, yeah, and the the fidelity is is really incredible on these images. In fact, the the, the big one uh, is is the Carina Nebula image, uh, where you see all of the space dust, where a lot of uh, stars uh, begin, uh, because there's so much uh, I don't know turbulent material out in space. Uh there was some speculation we had before this came out where I was I was asking, like, man, what must it be like? Because somebody has all these images before they're going to be released. Mm -hmm. They have to pick their favorites and how to present them and so on. And in this case, like, I think there's even commentary about how they intentionally arranged it since there's a – all of these are false color, of course. Right. But there's a bluish uh, horizon and what looks like a dust-like uh, land Orange mass or mass. whatever. Yeah. And so it's like – we anthropomorphize all of these. It's like a movie poster where movie posters are as hot and cold elements. Oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> the, the cyan like... and the orange yeah. on there, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, to to hear NASA talk about this, the fidelity on this is so great that in this picture, uh, which we've taken, which 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 we've had photos from ne from a uh, 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 Hubble before, uh, that we found hundreds of new stars just in in this photograph alone. Well, and. Uh... One of the things I'm really enjoying is kind of the Kremlinology of how they're treating everything. So obviously before this thing launches, it's over budget. It takes longer than expected or whatever, has 300 plus points of failure and all that stuff. Right. But then, you know, they get real quiet when everything goes out. <laughs> then they sort of stunt just a little bit by saying like, well, I don't know. Here's this little old test image. <laughs> and like, well, I guess we'll have the president just release this old garbage thing. What and then now, now they're in full stunting mode. And and uh, in fact, the rhetoric that you're seeing in the quotes are like, yeah, you've not seen anything yet. Like yeah. now that it's there and it works and we have a maintained connection, uh, the stated life of the project is five years, which, by the way, in NASA language is code for 40 years. Well, and, and that's what I heard was that the in in one of the reports that I read, uh, it was originally going to be a 10 year mission. And because of the launch going smoothly, it has enough fuel to go for 20 years, right. which is a, a very good way to set expectations. And it's also a fun kind of like, oh, and also <laughs> it'll work twice as long. It's so wild. Uh, we were lamenting the loss of uh, the, the the Voyager craft uh, one and two. And, you know, talk about overperforming. It's like, man, when NASA get it gets it right. Boy, do they get it right. They get it right for a really long time and really hard. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the last photo we've got here is uh, Stefan's Quintet. Had you seen this one? I had. Uh, it's almost as though you can, and it, it shouldn't matter because, you know, if you've seen the original, you're like, yeah, I guess this is a little more clear. But, boy, you could just see these smashing gaseous clouds 
blobbing into each other. It's incredible. Uh, right. This is a, a, an image of, I believe, five different um, galaxies. Like mid-collision. And, like, and like these, these two are mid-collision here. Sideswiped each other. Right. The, one of the weird things when, when looking into these photos was that the depth on all of these images is not is not intuitive. It, for, for example, like in this quintet they're one. They're presented as though they're all pretty close. Right. You yeah. kind of think, well, they're all stars. They're all out there. Right. But uh, from my understanding, uh, this galaxy here on the left, I believe, is the closest out of all five of them. And is much closer than, say, the two that are colliding in the background or uh, this, this the one up that here. That makes sense. Because uh, be uh, it does look pretty undisturbed compared to the two that are col just, you know, colliding into each other. Yeah. That those two are, are definitely approximately the same length away <laughs> from us. But um, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess that's one of the fundamental truths that we're finding out is whether or not just there's a average right size for a galaxy, you know, like a, mm -hmm. just just like a droplet of water tends to want to be about the size of a drop of water, you know? Yeah. Um, one of the other interesting uh, images that came out of this was uh, this is also an image of the Stefan's Quintet, but this is with uh, the with only the mid infrared, just like we did we saw with that other nebula. And they have found that this galaxy up here is actually a has a black hole, an active black hole going on. Um, and what we can see is the dust and the particles uh, being moved and, and and affected by it. Um, but with this this mid infrared version, it looks stripped away. And I don't know, it feels, I, I guess it's a little more obvious. I don't really know what a black hole well, would look like. Well, it, it, it depends an awful lot, as I understand it, on the angle. Uh, so so um, uh, a black hole has an accretion disk, and as everything hits to the middle, basically at, at the north and south poles of the black hole, you'll just get this, this insane uh, spigot of, of X-ray energy going out. So it's like sometimes if those happen to be facing towards our galaxy, we're able to see them a lot better. Mm. Um, and then uh, uh, one other last little, I guess, fun fact uh, that kind of popped out of all this was on on this image here of uh, the Southern Ring Nebula, out on the corner, did you see this streak here? Oh, they call him the streak. <laughs> Apparently that is, that is a galaxy that Whoa. is on its side. Just in the background or foreground? In, I, I guess below it to the right, we see a spiral galaxy that's that's face on. Yeah, and so this one appears to be at its at its thin side facing the camera. So it looks like a streak or a flare, but it it is supposedly just a, an an angled galaxy. Does it bug you that we get to see all of these galaxies, but but? Per the laws of physics, uh, we'll never get to physically go there, or or. Hmm. Like it, it sounds like one of those weird evil genie either ors, right? Where yeah. it's like you can physically go to one other galaxy, or you can see all the galaxies and never go to any of them. Which do you choose? I would. I mean, uh, if you were asking me today, I would say I would want to see them all. Right. Only because uh, I, m maybe one of them has life or anything worth interesting. You know, you know, like what, fi and, going finding out what is in this nebula is not particularly helpful. From to, to like my I don't know self actualization. Sure, yeah, yeah, you're, you're <laughs> this, like, I'm not, that's not my goal it, in life. It, the Starfield looks the same, and the computer goes boop boop. You are now in the nebula. <laughs> it's like, well, this isn't awesome uh -oh. at all. There's just a lot of phosphorus here. <laughs> Damn right, it. right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, is that something that you are longing for? I think I would have longed for it a lot more 20 years ago before modeling software got so good and simulations got so good. Mm. Now we live in an age with, uh, uh, you know, VR headsets and... Universe Sandbox is a game. Uh, yeah, just right? just float planets and you throw them around and it simulates it. And it's like, I find myself weirdly less and less interested in my physical body going anywhere, but my my perceived consciousness going everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like if you told me, hey... Uh, we're going to download your DNA. An avatar of you in Android form is going to go to this planet. You can spend the next 20 years of your life exploring what we're pretty certain is a highly accurate simulation of the planet. Hmm. Like, that feels, like, good enough for me. It would be... Because right now, like, the problem, <laughs> the, the tough thing is, like, to go and do that would be the last thing you ever do. 
Probably. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, and so I think it's a, I don't know, it is a tough sell. I mean, you are exploring the wild dark yonder, but. Or it, some version of me will. And, and I yeah. suppose like in a weird way. I guess that, I like the VR version of that. Cause there's no, <laughs> you don't end up in a box at the end of well, it. Even going back to, um, uh, I think it was Virgil, the poet, uh, uh, who said that uh, uh, my body's going to die, but some version of me is going to live for thousands of years. People are going to read my words. Yeah. So it's like, that's not as high fidelity, but it's the same sentiment that, that I'm feeling. You know, yeah. that yeah. idea that it's like, uh, you know, hey, uh, hello, I am a robot uh, imbued with the attitudes and uh predilections of brian brushwood yeah. a human who once lived i am a robot way. designed to remember you <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> or i don't even care if he remembers me you know it's like at that point i yeah I, it, it's that whole but i mean you're doing it for some reason right because i mean if you don't care i mean it could just be anything right yeah i don't know that i'm that nihilist uh <laughs> But, but, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, what, what are the other space related things we talked about, uh, two weeks ago before, uh, the weird wars, right. um, was I brought, up, weird. I brought up the idea of like realizing, and I'm sure this happens all the time. It's like, you have a thought and then turns out somebody else invented rear windshield wipers as well. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, I definitely noticed when in the, uh, futurology subreddit, there was an article somebody brought up about parking a sun blocking uh, bubble at Lagrange point one between the the sun and the earth. <laughs> and I was like, I told you I'm not crazy. <laughs> it was apparently written up like in a paper in the mid aughts or something. Oh, interesting. Uh, that, that doesn't make it any less of a global eco-terrorism. <laughs> right, but, right, right. It's good to know that I wasn't the only one. Futurama that told us exactly why that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Simpsons. <laughs> no, I, I mean, Futurama had that bit too, where they put a, uh, the global warming episode, they put a big mirror into space and it works for a minute and then it, and a rock hits it and it turns and it, it beams, it directs the sunlight at the earth and it makes like a laser. It's so funny because I, uh, before he left for Scotland, a place without a sun, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Heaton was bringing up how he had a guest on who was talking about um, uh, uh, basically, you know, here on earth, uh, the problem with solar energy is like sometimes there's clouds and so on. Yeah. And um, and he's like, what if you put a giant solar collector up in the or in orbit and then you were able to beam it down? I was like, let me guess, using microwave Are radiation. Waves? And he was like, yeah. I was like, right. So a microwave <laughs> heat ray <laughs> blasting just shooting from space. <laughs> uh, just AC power directly on, or DC power to Earth. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe a little dangerous. You might charge your phone, though. You might uh, get wireless charging on your phone. I mean, I'll way. tell you what, though. I, 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 I was really, really struck. I, I forget who the names of our co-hosts were in the before mm. times. But before the Weird Wars. Yeah. Uh, one Jerry, of them, was that one of them? Uh, Elaine. Uh, Doug. Jerry and Doug. That, yeah, that sounds, sounds right. right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think it was Doug was saying that um, uh, 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 the uh, uh, oh man, I, I'm now I'm into the lore. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, we, oh, I was really struck by how many starships are being made by SpaceX right now, and we compared it to Boeing and their 737s. Mm. The oh, fact sure. that Boeing makes two a day, and SpaceX is making a starship a day, and it's like yeah. that changes so much math. It, it does, uh, and I, I wonder how what the lead time on that affects the math too, right? I mean, we've we've uh, when we've done uh, videos like on Modern Rogue about uh, about about alcohol and spirits, you know, a, a thing that you hear is like, well, it takes a while to make good stuff, right? It, it takes years and years to age it, but you still you have to get started, right? You know, and so there's there's a bit of a lead time. And it's time. not like you do one. And then you're like, we have one. Start it again. Right, right. It's, it's like, not a 24 hour you're, you're process. Ongoing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I wonder how so how how long that that pace keeps up because that I mean, we could need a lot of starships. I mean, in the future, we probably will need a lot of whatever a starship is eventually. Uh, you know, wait, wait, yes. Let let us hope so. <laughs> What was interesting is the comments on the Futurology uh, uh, subreddit were mm. like, uh, see, this is why, um, uh, I forget the exact phrasing, but it was something about like uh, uncontrolled expansion, you know, geometric progression, just you you can't have uh, capitalism run amok. And I'm like, well, you can't if you intend to stay on the planet. You kind of can if you intend to get off planet and just expand forever doing, mm -hmm. doing everything. Um, Which, I mean, I don't know, then... 
we become the human disease. Good, good. <laughs> the human I, disease I became okay with universe. this a long time ago. <laughs> don't, don't tell me we have to have another weird war. <laughs> no, 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 I'm under, I'm under, I'm under, I, I got another story for you, by the way. Okay, hit me. Um, uh, uh, farming. Yep. Farming. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm for it. For it? Okay. For it. Uh, some animals do it. Ant besides humans? Uh, some animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, ants. Ants. Ants, ants are it. a big one. A lot Bees of insects. Do it. Bees do it. Uh, beetles do uh, it. Not Termites? Be uh, yep. Uh, but do you know that there's a new mammal that we believe is farming? A farming mammal? Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Hold what do you on. think it would be? Give me a moment. Give me a moment. <laughs> um... Okay, it's got to be clever. Uh, we know that, 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 that chimpanzees are pretty smart. They use tools insofar as, like, sticks. Um, mm -hmm. Not so good at trade. Um, pre, uh, hmm. So what would be the most surprising mammal? I would think it would be a small one, like a shrew or something, like farming fungus the way an ant would. A, a vole. That's my guess. A vole. A vole. I think that's probably... Let me Google a vole just to make sure that that's close to the right answer. Because I think that's probably pretty close. I'm going to say that that's close. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, researchers believe that pocket gophers uh, <laughs> practice that's, agriculture. That sounds like a derisive slang term <laughs> for a vole. Hey, you got a pocket gopher in there? <laughs> no, it's just a vole. <laughs> no, they, they found that uh, gophers have these... Uh, uh, these tunneling systems uh, that they that they travel through, okay, and that uh, uh, a type of root will grow into the sides of those tu those Steven tunnels. Root. <laughs> well, and and uh, apparently uh, the gophers uh, can get about twenty to sixty percent of their daily calories from eating those roots, and they are fertilizing and growing and protecting them. They are maintaining them. Uh, there's a little bit of a controversy so, if it's farming or not, because they're not planting a seed, but they are protecting they, and maintaining. But they are being um, naturally food gifted stewards of their 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 tubers. Yeah, I mean, it would be the it would be similar to like fruit farming. You know, you you plant a tree, but you don't chop down the tree. You just keep collecting. It's not dissimilar from what they're doing. Is this farming to you? Uh, are you pro this? I are you mean, pro it or again? I'm sorry. I, I'm going to need to see the face of this of this. Look at that guy. Come on. <laughs> Isn't he? That dude is pose, posing. That's a farmer. <laughs> that's, that's a farmer. farmer. That's a farmer who's excited to farm. <laughs> like, somebody needs to license that and make a brand of tuber uh, specifically for... <laughs> gophers? Gopher tubers? <laughs> yeah, gophersonly.com. Gopher tuber. <laughs> yep. um, yeah, I, I guess it is. Uh, although, there's a lot of examples of uh, what... I don't know what do they call it, eco balance uh, or or uh, oh. homeostasis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the and, circle of life. Uh, uh, sure. In in hi hypothetically, yes. Uh, although although in reality, it's kind of a brutal seven year cycle with locusts descending. And or, mm. or, is it fourteen years when locusts? Oh just goodness, destroy I'd, everything. I, I would not know. Yeah, I wouldn't know. That wasn't in the Lion King. They didn't put that in the new version of the Lion King. Yeah. That would be, be, be a Beyonce gross. singing about locusts. Like, they're in the middle locusts. of doing the Lion King. They're doing the Lion King, and all of a sudden, improv everywhere shows up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but but uh, I, I don't know. This is very interesting because this is apparently the only other mammal that we are aware of that does this type of certainly agricultural maintenance if you don't consider it farming. Yeah, and I, I guess the only question when it comes to farming is whether or not there's intentionality to it. Uh, mm. My guess is this is instinctual, similar to the way a squirrel probably is not thinking, I may need these nuts later. Let me hide them in a good spot. It just knows, let me get the thing. Let yeah. me get the bobbit. Yeah, yeah, And that very well could be. I mean, it's they're fertilizing it with their waste. It's not exactly like they've got a restroom. <laughs> Uh, they, maybe they've got a corner. I'm not sure. Uh, it, it turns out they, they, they all watch The Martian. <laughs> they're, they're getting ideas. Uh, okay, I got a last story for you here. Okay. I'm going to tell you just the broad details. We're going to play 20 questions. Okay. And you're going to have to work your way to the weirdness. All right. Uh, a Missouri man, his name is Kent Slaughter. A uh, man from... Slafter. I guess it could be that, too. <laughs> uh, man from Springfield, Missouri, is suing Bass Pro Shops. Why? Oh, uh, well, he's suing not just one location, right? He's suing the whole corporation. Uh, it is a class action lawsuit against Bass Pro.
pro. Yes. Oh, and 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 this is a human. Uh, yep. Uh, okay. Springfield, Missouri. Okay. In Springfield. Uh, 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 okay, that's one question down. Um, is he active on Twitter? Ooh, uh, <laughs> this is an, uh, this is from the AP, so they don't have it's more of a snippet. So okay, I'm not, okay. I can't, I can't answer that. It's a that's free fine. question. I can't yeah, that's that. fine. Um, uh, 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 is he a fisher? Ooh, good question. Because I mean, Bass Pro Shops, right? Obviously, you, you would think, oh well, uh, maybe. Um, I do not see information relevant. Okay. To okay. That. Uh, is he a human being? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh. Is he handsome? Ooh, they do not have any photos oh! or pictures at uh, the Springfield News Leader, unfortunately. Okay, okay. Why would you be upset about... Uh, it is a class action lawsuit. Uh, the incident occurred in 2021. Oh, it's one incident. Uh, a yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did it involve a fishing tournament? It did not. Did not. Did it involve an ad campaign? Hmm. Uh, yeah, that's part of it. Okay. Marketing's part of it. Okay, okay. Um, oh, wait. Is he upset about the way bass are portrayed in the artwork of bass pro shops? <laughs> No, no, but that would be very funny. Okay, that is okay. very. I can imagine a bass, a, a bass pro shop Twitter TikTok account, and all the comments are saying, "If bass do that when they're scared." <laughs> 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 uh, so, but it has something to do with marketing. But no, it doesn't have to do with the way that the bass. Okay, are okay. Uh, 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 is is he afraid that they're going to catch all the? Got to catch them all. <laughs> he's uh, he's upset with their new slogan. Got to catch them all. Uh, no, but he does have issues with some very specific wording. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Is the word bass? <laughs> uh, no, bass is, is not is, in that. Is the slogan. word pro? <laughs> no, it's not actually. Is the word shop? <laughs> nope. All right, I'm ten down. Ten down. Ten okay. down. Okay. All right. You're getting there. You're getting. You're closing <laughs> in on this, to be honest. <laughs> um. Uh. uh is he a vegetarian? Uh, I wouldn't. I don't know, but I would not guess that. To okay. Be the case. All right. All right. Um, he uh, does it have something to do with the lures? No, but it does have to do with merchandise. Huh. Huh. Uh. Is uh, I uh is 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 he. Is he a video gamer? Oh, I, I do not know that. I uh, that's a free one. I don't know that question. Okay, that answer. Uh, 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 a, 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 a class action. So, so it, he's acting on behalf of a class of people who right. have all been wronged. They've all been wronged. Correct. Uh, is it? Oh wait, is it? Hold on. Is it about the size of their rulers? N no. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking it would be some kind of like yeah. uh, your rulers are making fish look bigger than they are, and now all the fish are dying. The fish story ruler. Yes. It gets yes. bigger every time. And, and it's like I just wanted a picture of going into court, like Your Honor, this is eight inches, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I would watch that. I would watch that episode of Judge Judy. <laughs> um, I will say, no, measuring measuring distance is not okay. part of this. Though measuring time uh -oh. would be a hint I might give oh, you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, is he upset that they are marketing the pastime of fishing a largely useless activity that is unnecessary and promotes global warming? Uh, I do not co-sign that. No, that's not it. He is upset about, he is upset about, uh, uh, about something they put in their marketing and a policy of the store that went with it. Oh, wait a minute. Did he try to return like a 30 year old fishing rod or something? 
Oh, it's something very old. It. Uh, okay, I'm gonna give it to you because you're very close. <laughs> Ken Slaughter uh, said that after years of exchanging his redhead lifetime guarantee all-purpose wool socks, Bass Pro has changed their policy, and he only now has six, oh no, excuse me, 60 days of a warranty instead of a lifetime warranty. He had bought these socks because the marketing said, quote, they are the last sock you'll ever need to buy because of the lifetime warranty. He had uh, tried to exchange four pairs and they apparently they changed the design of the sock. Get this. They changed the design of the sock to have a stripe on it. So that if you try to trade in the one with the stripe, it's only 60 days. Then they're able to say like, oh, well, we don't have that type. You only got 60 days yeah. on this sock. Right. Uh, and so uh, Slaughter said in the lawsuit, the, lo the warranty was a major factor in his decision to buy the socks. Uh, Bryce, how much did these socks cost? <laughs> I'm gonna Google that because it can't it can't have been it can't have been that much. Okay, I'm at BassPro.com and they're still called Redhead Lifetime Guarantee All Purpose Wool Socks for Men. Okay, I got a number. How much do you think <sighs> they are? $29.99. Twelve dollars. What? <laughs> Twelve eleven. Think, sorry, class action, how much is he suing for? I don't know. It doesn't say here just yet. I guess he's still got to figure he says out. He four fish. <laughs> I'll take, I'll I guess take four of your best fish. I guess that's the thing. It's like, what What did you do? You bought 12 pairs maybe and have tried to replace them over a couple of years? Okay. He Between 2014 and 2021, Slaughter purchased a total of 12 socks. I'm assuming that means pairs. And, uh, I, I would I love don't to believe, believe it. it's individual socks. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like negotiating down. He's like, well, I don't know, why, why would I need two? I'm just going to replace gonna, the one. To repair them every, I'm just going to send them in every week. Um, but uh, The yeah. right ones are fine. It's the left one that gets all <laughs> worn the, out. The one doesn't always break. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's your weird story. Wait, I, would be, I, would be, uh, I would be upset. If you, if you call a lifetime warranty and I'm trying to trade them in, I would be upset, especially if for something that cheap. I mean, but... But ultimately, don't you, if you're the shop, get to say, here's a refund. Sorry for your trouble. Or, you know, or here, I guess here's the thing, right? A warranty, I don't expect a warranty to be, uh, you'll get unlimited of them for, for the length of the warranty, right? I mean, uh, 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 uh by the way, I have very specific concerns about this class action lawsuit. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, As somebody who offers a lifetime replacement <laughs> guarantee I'm, on a certain And I'm composing pen. my words very carefully. <laughs> but um, uh, but it's like I would – I feel like if I had a lifetime warranty, I would feel entitled to one exchange anytime. But yeah. not forever unlimited exchanges. Yes. Well, here's the question. Do they – continue to offer the lifetime warranty and yet only enforce 60 days like it just pick a lane right well like, i mean i'm yeah, on the bass pro the, website it's, it's, that's what it's called so unless they discontinued it or I mean, something like they a, call it lifetime like there was a time that the e-class ticket in 1960s disneyland mm. you know they they no longer do those classes of tickets but if you have an e-class ticket you'd be dumb to do it this way but it'll get you full park admission hmm. uh and so now they're they're much more rare on the uh aftermarket trades hmm. on your ebays and whatnot hmm. uh chimera, chimera in our chat says that uh, they don't see a lifetime on there so maybe maybe i pulled up an old an old skew but um i i guess it, you know if i buy it and it says 60 days then uh, obviously but if you tell me lifetime i don't know this the fifty dollars it would have been to replace those socks would not would have kept this off of the, uh, the AP. Probably. Well, and 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 <laughs> this is uh, this is more inside baseball than we would do on weird things. Ever since we won the weird wars, that's right. Uh, but this is more. We write the rules now. Yeah, that's right. But uh, but that was a that was a legitimate concern that uh, David had when I insisted that we offer a lifetime replacement warranty or guarantee on on the the pen. He's yeah. like, well, what if somebody does it? It's like, well, around the fifth time, <laughs> we'll just send them two. <laughs> around the twelfth time, we'll just send them a check and yeah. say sorry. <laughs> that's too many pens. <laughs> And and that's like marketed specifically is like when it's done we'll, we'll whatever right which I don't I bet Bass Pro 
doesn't they probably right. don't go through well, all that. And, and but they do you, market it as the last if it's the last sock I'll ever need. You know what? I'm changing my mind. If it's the last sock I'll ever need, it better be the last sock I ever what, need. Here's what they need to do. Is they need to introduce a new character, uh uh uh, 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 uh the Terminator. <laughs> Come with me if you want your socks. He just pulls out a knife and he was just like, somebody tries to return and then just like half a katana comes out. <laughs> and you're like, you sure about that? You sure that's why? You sure that's what you want to do? <laughs> they're like, no, you know what? I'm good. They're like, because they're going to be the last. Yeah, I get it. The last socks. I'll, I'll take better care of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would, I would not put that above the company that owns one of the biggest pyramids in the world. I would not. Wait, do they? Yeah. Oh, that's right. The they, Bass Pro. They, they bought the, the the one in Memphis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which used to be a sports auditorium. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, well, that's it for news stories. You want to do some picks? Uh, yeah. But first, I want to remind people. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh. Hey, two things. Uh, guess what? What? What's a penny worth? Uh, about one hundredth of a dollar. That's right. Yeah. Now, what happens when you split that penny in half? Ooh, you get a good magic trick. You get half a penny. Yeah, and a half of a what penny. What happens when you them. split it four ways? I think you get a quarter of a penny. That's right, even less. Even less. Now, what if... Okay, and this could, is sounding bad all the time. This is our new double your pledge guarantee. Oh. All you have to do <gasps> is sign up at patreon.com slash weird thing. Okay, and now I'm doing it now. And now that the weird wars are over, you'll have pretty much doubled your pledge. That's right. You have effectively doubled your spending power viewers because of the weird wars. <laughs> because in an alternate reality, if the other side, I forget their names. Uh, uh, it if was the other Elaine. Side, Elaine and Gertrude. Gertrude. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, if they had won, their plan was to just stop doing the show. They would and have we're like, no, Mm-mm. no. We have to and give the they people were so the weird. scared that one of them is in the sky now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lives up there. That doesn't mean heaven. but <laughs> But the other one. Left our side of the planet. Not even on this part of the globe. I mean, we are running this bitch. That's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> and you can really help are. keep us in charge. <laughs> Please support the victors of the Weird Wars right. by going to patreon.com slash weird things. First, you get early access to the After Things podcast and all sorts of other good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we forgot. Yeah. We if you don't want to pay, go to the sky or get the <laughs> hell out of the Western Hemisphere. That's the rules. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we, for, we forgot about this, but we uh, we wanted to talk about um, another Dali, a fun Dali thing uh, uh, someone had. Did oh, you want to do this? Right. Really quick? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so we're starting to see more people get into the uh, Dali uh, super exclusive program. Uh, which, you know, they sent an email today saying, uh, uh, yeah. you're only going to get four yeah. so that we can open up for more people. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm against it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like it because it, now it all fits in one screenshot. That's true. But also... That's 30% less. Unlike your pledge at, <laughs> at patreon.com slash weird thing. It goes twice as far. Double, that's double right. effective, right? <laughs> right. Uh, so this is uh, Mike Hasabaya, uh, who, I guess, uh, made some Dolly 2 images asking for for appliances and other goods, but from the Tesla brand. Yeah, so basically somebody gets in, first thing they do is just type in a Tesla blank. A Tesla blank. A Tesla <laughs> blank. So what, what what do we got on this list and how would you describe them? All right. And we'll have the show we'll have the link to this in the show notes if you want to watch along. Uh we've got the Tesla vacuum cleaner. And I could only describe this as um <laughs> a, a, weird, a hoseless weird. vacuum. It w- weirdly, it looks like a uh, a segue that you would sit on. <laughs> it looks like the monopod. Imagine thing. the mono imagine, wheels. Yeah, exactly. Imagine a mono wheel that you would sit on. Okay. You would put on your finest uh house wife outfit mm. and you would uh, uh duct tape Wee. a swiffer to the front of it <laughs> and then just drive around i love that it clearly uh has an attachment for a hose and uh, and all but it is not attached doesn't need Does, one doesn't connect it's wireless <laughs> uh the next a tesla washing machine now this just looks like a as this just looks like a red, nice, like, you know, Samsung, but it doesn't have any buttons. I guess the difference is that it doesn't have any buttons on it. This this also makes you realize, like, with, with if I hadn't paused to consider why would a robot think this is a Tesla, mm. then all of a sudden I realized, like, wow, yeah, I guess Tesla really likes, you know, the black, white, and red aesthetic. Yeah. He says wearing a shirt. With... Black, black, white, and red <laughs> aesthetic. Well, and, and also, you know, the Tesla cars, they don't have um, front grills. They, so they probably 
I bet have a smoother, right. yeah, have a, have a certain smoothness to it. They've got those flush, um, uh, handles. So you probably don't see a lot of buttons and everything is, uh, 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 as, as, as close to perfect. Um, Oh, what are they? Silhouette or, uh, uh, no, 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 uh, what do they call, um, uh, 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 pris- uh, uh, geometric prisms, um, uh, something solids, uh, yeah. Primary solids. Sure. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Okay. Uh, we, we've also got a Tesla fridge here. Ooh. Would buy this in a heartbeat. That actually looks kind of... That one's pretty great, It looks right? pretty cool. It's got like gl- uh, the glowing um, handles are interesting. It's like that... Okay, that's what's weird. I'm looking at this. I'm trying to see why is this so weird. It is a four-door fridge. The bo- the fridge two, is two, two doors. Door, two doors for the freezer up top. And two, two doors for the, for the fridge down below. <laughs> like, I would definitely buy this fridge. I also love that. Especially it, if, like, secretly it's a mega battery at the same time. Oh, that would be cool. And you, oh, interesting. Yeah. Someone needs to, okay, here's the thing. Yeah. Someone should make a battery heat pump. If they don't already. Oh, think about like this. Like a fridge or something that takes the heat uh, and push pumps it. Uh, uh, That's how it works, right? It, well, well, well it, you can have a cold chain reservoir. So imagine imagine if this was a big battery, depending on your usage, like um, I don't think it's possible to expand anything, but you could fill it with battery components mm. so that they remained cold. Eh, but actually, electricity and cold don't go, get along real well. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Elon will figure that out. I'm yeah. Sure. Uh, how about the Tesla desk fan? Uh, I'm I'm less optimistic for for this thing that clearly is intended for old ladies to do their hair, <laughs> and is also <laughs> definitely on the floor. <laughs> it's a great desk fan. It's, it's on the floor. <laughs> it's it's straight up. Uh, look, if, if you want to read Vogue magazine and gossip with the ladies, <laughs> this is the fan for you. <laughs> it does look like those old hair dryers. Uh, the oh, the Tesla microwave. Now I got this in a box of Duplo. One <laughs> <laughs> and it broke. Uh, this is it uh, interesting okay. for some reason. Like, I think I can picture using the handle to open it, but but there's like an interior that's like a hole within a hole that I, I'm not real sure, yeah, what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm not either. There is definitely no buttons or panels, so this is probably oh, like the um, uh, uh they've got a um, an, an Amazon assistant uh microwave yeah so you can talk to it i bet this is like that where it's like it's an app or there's a a, a voice thing and you can only do it with can, can 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 we press pause real quick uh i got i got some surprising traction for for a grouchy old man thing okay. i said on twitter i sure. said uh you know i could go the rest of my life without hearing uh an alexa device say uh by the way like Ugh. whatever right okay uh-huh. so uh-huh. like like e- either Either I get I get upset when Siri sentiment. does it to me. Oh my god! And like no. and like constant upsells. No. Siri, uh, is, Siri is just trying to be helpful. It's like is reading your text messages and then like and did you know you can just talk to me right now because you or you know you know you can change what thing I get from and it's like okay and so, usually it's good about only like once and then it remembers that I know but I know that the Amazon stuff is way more well, and, intrusive. And Siri is like weirdly like like no selling herself. She's like, hey, if this is rude, I'll stop. Just tell me to stop. Yeah. Whereas Alexa is just like, uh, <laughs> hey. Uh, because I assume you're an idiot. Here's the fifteen thousandth time I'm going to remind you that we have a music service. So, yeah. yeah. Here's oh um, yeah. Uh, Tesla TV. Now this one's it's also red. All of these are red. Right. Um. I don't. That's one of those things. Like like I never noticed how much of the Tesla brand is that is that red on Chrome. Yeah. Even the Tesla bathtub. Bathtub is dope. <laughs> The bathtub is so dope. You That's know that thing cool. heats in like four seconds. You can oh, set yeah. it to any temperature immediately. Like like you fill it first, and then you just think of what temperature you want it to be, and then it just is. I love the glowing accent at the bottom, too. I'm pretending that that's like a thermometer, and you can tell how hot it is by how bright the thing is. Okay. Uh, the Tesla toilet, I would not go anywhere near the. Wait a minute. Well, let's say you hated Tesla. Wouldn't that be your favorite thing? <laughs> I like that it. I wonder if it has to be built into a prison or if that's just a design. <laughs> it, does, it does very much look <laughs> prison chic. <laughs> uh, and we've got the Tesla dining table. No. Uh, no. Boo. No, that's not quite right. Uh, the Tesla cleaning robot. 
Okay. That's cute. Explain to me what the robot thinks a cleaning robot needs to do. Also, yes, that robot's not going to clean anything. <laughs> because because <laughs> which one is worse, this one or the vacuum? This one. Because the vacuum, <laughs> you could probably vacuum get a hose. Has <laughs> the capability to vacuum. This robot is about an inch and a half off the ground with huge caster wheels. It will not uh, uh, vacuum up anything. Uh, but it looks fun it looks like a robot toy it doesn't look like it would clean anything i agree okay um uh well there you go thank you mike hasabaya for that and uh thank you to everybody for listening uh do you want to do picks real quick yeah uh, uh, uh what do you got uh, um hmm uh i got one if you okay need you one. you go actually you know what um i didn't talk about it last week because i wanted to promote burning earth but um uh I, I've watched and caught up with all of the old man. Have you seen this? No. On, on the Hulu? The old man? Yeah. Is, uh, I don't know Jeff that. Bridges being Jeff Bridges AF. Oh, I like uh, Jeff Bridges. Uh, John Lithgow being John Lithgow AF. Okay. Also, best of all, young versions from 40 years ago perfectly emulating a young Jeff Bridges and a young John Lithgow. It's unreal. Oh, that's like, cool. Like the, the, the John Lithgow who's young is, is just as bald and has the same circular glasses. And it's just like, well, I don't know if that's the way you should be doing it. Are they right? doing, is it like a, a another actor or they, is it all digital? Uh, different actors. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Like just expert casting. It's incredible. Nice. Uh, so, uh, so you're watching this on Hulu. This looks like an FX uh, program, The Old Man. What's it about? Yeah, so they do a really, really good job of not wasting your time. Each episode, um, you know how it's very popular to take 10 episodes and pretend they're all one big movie or whatever? Mm -hmm. Chapter one. What if instead each episode had like a big reveal, and the moment the big reveal happened, just everybody else knew that so episode mm. one ends with a big reveal yeah and then episode two Everybody first found three out. minutes it's like well you know about the big reveal oh my god is that true okay well we're all on the same page now and then, that's, and then you go into episode two that's episode two ends with a big reveal episode three begins like well you heard about that big reveal oh yeah we all did and it, it's 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 yeah. delightful I, i'm loving it nice um it does it does it have a lot it, it, uh, is it a story where there are like a lot of different parties of characters who are separated where they need to kind of have that regrouping? Yes. Okay. Uh, and there's connected cool. tissue between them. Because uh, I, I, uh, a lot of shows would not do that. A lot of shows would just be like, I think dramatic irony is very valuable, which let, uh, is not let, necessary. Let me put it this way. Um, I'm at episode five or six, I think, six, uh, and John Lithgow and Jeff Bridges have still never met. Oh, interesting. Uh, they met in hmm. the past, but... I haven't seen their current characters meet. Uh, and cool. uh, it's it's very different, uh, slight giveaway for episode one. Uh, you There's spend, an old man. You spend most of episode one wondering if this person, Jeff Bridges, is losing his grip on reality and mm -hmm. having difficulty of uh, following things. What you find out by the end is, no, that is definitely what happened to his wife, who is now departed, and so he's paranoid about it happening, happening to, to him. him. Uh, and instead, he very much has his act together. And you get to find out just how badass he still is. Like, he's, got, oh. he's got goosebumps Ooh. thinking about it. He's, <laughs> very cool. he's very badass by the end of episode one. Nice. It's, it's really great. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Okay, the old man on uh, on FX Hulu. Um, I got a pick. Um, I I don't remember. I'm, I'm, I probably heard about this on the Shift F1 podcast. But uh, Netflix has a documentary series right now called Bad Sport. Um, which are just documentaries about different sporting um, crimes. And uh, I, I ended up tuning in to watch one of them uh, called The Need for Weed. Okay. It is about uh, Randy Lanier, uh, who uh, was a race car driver and who funded his race car operation by selling and smuggling weed in the 70s. I saw that on Showtime. Yeah? No, I Oh. Describing the show Weeds. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> well, after his husband died, <laughs> he had to raise the kids somehow. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I, this is a, this is, I think is a really well done documentary. Randy's story is, is incredible a little bit. Um, uh, 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 be, partly because. How high would you rate it? <laughs> 420, man. <laughs> um, but but, it, but it, it's incredible because. By the end of it, Randy is a successful race car driver. He ends up uh, 
this is all historical fact. He ends up in the Indy 500 and wins Rookie of the Year, his first uh, his first race there, which was his dream as a as a child to be in the Indy 500. And also, he becomes a generally a proficient a smuggler <laughs> by the end. Um, uh, and I, I don't want to give away too. If I buy, like he pulls up, it's like he gets off the indie track, and everyone's like, you know, coming in, replacing tires, all this stuff. And then he gets into a station wagon, pulls into like an Exxon, and everybody like grabs the weed, <laughs> and off he drives. Um, and uh, they, they, what is really great, I think, about this documentary, more than just the facts, because the facts are are fantastic, and you should watch just to get those. But um, uh, everybody involved talks very openly about what they were doing. They were buying and selling marijuana. So, um, th- this is not a, a, a docudrama. This is a straight up like. This is uh, a feature documentary about them. Yeah. Uh, I guess you would call them the pot crew. <laughs> That's, thank you, JDS3K in the chat. <laughs> Sorry. It's, uh, they talk really openly about it, partly because um, I know Randy does and maybe some of the other members involved, but got a presidential pardon uh, for, for their crimes because they were ultimately well. Spoiler. Yeah, you can't but, spoil a documentary. Uh, yeah. Uh, in, in any case, they talk very openly about it, which I, I think is really interesting. And then when they get to the part of the story that they don't want to talk about openly, then all everything changes. All of your subtext readers go like, "What? Like they were just talking about doing cocaine? Like, are you? Why are you not being so? Why are you being so cagey about this?" And it's it's very it's a very cool documentary. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's Call the episode is Need for Weed. It is part of Bad Sport on Netflix. I think it's very cool. Is this sort of a Netflix version of um, like the the Thirty for Thirty documentaries? Yeah, Just they're really really good storytelling. Yeah, and and they're all different different stories each each uh, episode or volume, whatever they call it. Um, and, and so it's it's like it's a really well done story. It tell they tell it in like an hour or hour and a half. It it doesn't overstay its welcome, and. They've got a lot of really interesting footage. The they talk about how they, uh, I won't do it. I won't do it. They they talk about the smuggling and the smuggling, the engineering that they do for the smuggling is really cool. They clear out a ballast yep. on a huge ship and they stuff it in the ballast. And then when there are problems with that, they explain what those problems were too. Um, it's fascinating. Does uh, it become seaweed? Briefly. Okay. All right. <laughs> briefly. Uh, 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 I don't want to make too many jokes about that. <laughs> You know what? Since uh, since uh, there's only half as many of us after the weird wars, that's right. We should double down okay. on our picks. Sure. Uh, I watched uh, and loved capital L O V E D the Bob's Burgers movie. Oh, really? So great! It's so great! It's so charming and fun <laughs> and silly. I may have ended up watching it twice because I kept having to call over various family members to see different parts of it again. Really? Uh, it's it's. It's delightful. Oh, that's that's awesome. I love Bob's Burgers, and i I haven't watched I haven't watched Bob's Burgers in a long time. Can I just jump right into yes. it? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. okay. Uh, you know, Mr. Fish Odor is the yeah. Like a, he pulls up, he goes, he's, he's like a <laughs> wealthy landowner coming through. <laughs> you know, it's it's, it's everything. <laughs> there's a uh, uh, there's a MacGuffin where they they need to. Uh, uh, pay the rent on time and so a whole day goes by and uh the, one of my favorite moments is bob like like they do a time lapse thing and they just show bob staring out the window going uh <laughs> and then he's still at dinner going uh <laughs> passing the butter uh and then cuts to him in bed with linda he's like well i kept it pretty good in front of the kids <laughs> but <laughs> God, it's great. It's the, great. God, the show's so good. Um, that's and that's on Disney Plus now, right? Uh, no, I think this one is HBO Max. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. All right. Uh, oh no, that's right. That's right. Okay. Very cool. Uh, the Bob's Burgers movie. I had another thing I was gonna pick, and then um, uh, and and goodness, I wasn't prepared to say it, so I didn't really remember what it was. Isn't that fun? <laughs> It is. Oh well. Uh, well, uh, that, you know what? You, uh, 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 I've only got that one pick for today. Um, there we go. Anything else? I feel no, like we had a good uh, weird time. Uh, I think we did it. We, we did it. saved the universe. Mm. You're welcome. You're welcome. Don't go to war with us about it. Yep. We already won it. We'll send you a bill, NASA. All right, folks. It's been weird. Thank you. All right. Cool. Uh, do we want to do an after things? Uh, oh, I don't know. I, uh, I, I think we did a good job of yeah. showing up. Uh, yeah, I think we'll just do that. 
Um, alrighty, everybody. Well, we are going to get, um, in fact, I can use some of my time to do some other stuff. Uh, uh, we're going to have cord killers here in just a few hours, so please join us. Uh, so, I, 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 I still should not necessarily be watching mm. Westworld, although you guys are making a very tempting case for it. I'm oh, really excited. Today was the day. Oh, this no. week was the week. Oh, where, where, where? Uh, okay, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll wait to find out. I'll wait to find out. Um, and, 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 what's so crazy and, and, is I fell asleep watching it, and I literally fell asleep right before the big reveal of the week. Yep. Uh, which was very fun to. Because I, I woke up today and I was like, I need to remember what happened on Westworld, and I pull up a recap, and I'm like, I, just, I don't remember anything happening. Like this thing and this thing, but it didn't really. And they were like, it's the big episode. And so I, I had a very pleasant time tuning in just for the punchline. <laughs> A lot of big well, stuff. You get that weird moment where it's like you tune in and you're like, well, I know I watch it. And then you're like, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And then you get to the end and you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing that not caring because <laughs> I was falling asleep. Bad that too. Bad that too. <laughs> All right, everyone, we're going to go offline. Thank you so much for joining us here for some weird things. Yeah. Um, yeah. R.I.P. Rest to, in weird. to the fallen. Rest, Rest in, in weird. Bye. <laughs>